transcribed. Now listen to Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Anderson, brought to you by Crosley, makers of pace-setting products for happier living. Crosley Automatic Television. Oh, boy. Beautiful Crosley Shelvador Refrigerators, the world's most convenient. Wonderful Crosley Automatic Electric Ranges. Crosley Shelvador Freezers, color style radios, and many other leading home appliances. <laughs> If an old Elizabethan poet named Anonymous had thought of it, he'd probably have written something that goes like this. Fashion is a fickle dame. She's not to be relied on. Sometimes she says a skirt should drape. Sometimes it should be tight on. But women bow and scrape to her. They treat her like a duchess. But heaven help the husband who is caught within her clutches. Agree? Well, maybe you will after a half hour spent with the Andersons in Springfield. Like this. Margaret. Mom's in the living room, Dad. Oh, hello, bud. Did you want her for something? Just want to ask her a question. Oh. Maybe you know where it is. Where what is? Where does your mother keep the machine oil? In the machine, I guess. In the... <laughs> bud. I'll be back in a minute. I got to get something out of the attic. I don't know. Anybody else could ask a perfectly normal question like, where do you keep the machine oil and get a perfectly normal answer, but not the Andersons. Margaret... Ed Davis wants oh, to dear, go... Oh, dear, look at my new permanent. It's absolutely awful. I told the man I wanted soft, curly ringlets. What did I get? Frizz. Did you ever see anything so horrible in your whole life? Oh, mm. sure. I mean, no. I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, I don't see why you're so upset. Well, I guess I am upset over nothing. After all, a permanent isn't permanent, is it? Uh, exactly. <laughs> Now, Margaret, if you'll just tell me where Father? the machine... Betty, please. Oh, hello, Father. Are you home? <laughs> Am I home? Jim. Well, what kind of a question is that? Mother, I'm absolutely desolate. Betty, if you don't mind, I'd like to finish talking to your mother. But, Father, this will only take a minute, and I just can't wait. But... Just a minute, Jim. Betty, what is it? Look at this formal. I just got it at Gorman's, and what am I going to do with it? Well, considering the fact I advanced you your June allowance to buy it, you might wear it. But, Father, it's so old-fashioned. Oh, of course. You've only had it a full 45 minutes. <laughs> I bought it on the sale rack, but I didn't know it was so out of date. It's got a four-month-old hemline. Tragedy. <laughs> J.D. Liggett says everybody who's going to the weekend party in Middleton is going to take a white formal. And this is the only white formal I have. I can't believe it. How do you think I'll feel in a formal two inches longer than anybody else's? Warm? <laughs> Go get my sewing box, Betty, and I'll see what I can do. Oh, thanks, Mother. You're a doll. Thanks a million. And now, Jim, what was it you wanted? Ed Davis is going hunting, and he wants to borrow... Mom, where did you say that box was? Bud. I thought it was in that old green trunk. Bud. I turned everything inside out, and I couldn't find it. Bud, I was talking to your mother. I know, but the basketball team is leaving in half an hour. The coach will say I'm a poor sport. You don't want me to get kicked off the team, do you? Bud. Now, Jim. Margaret, I've been trying for five minutes to find out where the machine oil is. Let me think a minute. I know now you stored it. The oil? No, the box Bud is looking for. It's one of the things you put up in the attic when Bud was born. You remember it. Margaret, that was 15 years ago. Jim, you could at least try to remember. Why? Because I gotta find it, Dan. What for? Because of the skit. What skit? The one the basketball team is going to put on at the varsity club camping trip this weekend. It's about the long, long ago. You know, when you and Mom were young. <laughs> oh, not that long ago. Everybody on the team plays a part. We all drew straws. So? So the box is where they are. Where well, what are? Uh, it is. The bloomers. Bloomers? 
I got the short straw. <laughs> I have to play the girl. That's why I have to find the costume with a coach with Sam a poor sport. He's going to wear my old gym midi and bloomers. But I know you'll be lovely, just lovely. I don't even know what bloomers are. <laughs> but you know the shorts the girls wear for their high school gym classes? Sure, Dan. Well, you go back up and look in the attic until you find something that doesn't look anything like them. Those are bloomers. Gosh, thanks, Dad. Now, if it's not too much to ask... <laughs> Kathy, darling, what is it? Here we go again. Everybody's going to have for Mr. Grant <laughs> Kathy, what's the matter? I'll just be here all time. Jim, can't you do something to stop her? Kathy, tell us what the trouble is. Kathy, Daddy wants to help you. <laughs> Kathy, I just raised your allowance to 50 cents a week. Really? <laughs> well, temporarily. Now, tell us what's wrong. Daddy Davis said I'd be a wallflower at the square dancing class, and I don't want to be a wallflower. Why does Patty say you're going to be a wallflower, dear? Because my skirt doesn't twirl. Everybody else looks like sunflowers, and I just look like a petunia. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Angel. Mommy will get some more material and make you a real full skirt. You will, Mommy? Yes, dear. Oh, boy! Oh, you want me to get the door, Daddy? Never mind, I'll go. Kathy, get out of my way. Daddy, I'm going to be a sunflower. Oh, hello, Ed. Come in. Hello, Jim. Margaret. Yes, Jim. Oh, hello, Ed. Hello, Margaret. Betty, Kathy. Hello, Mr. Davis. Hello, Mr. Davis. Do you really think you can shorten the dress, Mother? It doesn't look too difficult, dear. Oh, I'll get the phone, Mother. Look, Mom, I found it. Here they are. Oh, hello, Mr. Davis. Hello, bud. Hello. Oh, I'll call her. Gosh, Mother. what are those? Bloomers, dear. That's what I wore when I took gymnasium. Margaret, don't you think they're kind of roomy? <laughs> That's the way they're supposed to be, bud. Maybe I can take them in a little at the waist. Margaret, Ed doesn't have all day. The phone's for you, Mother. Oh, thank you, dear. Margaret. Betty, will you help your father for me? What do you want, Father? Well, it's a little number about three inches tall, and it has a little plastic cap. Jim, all I want is the can of machine oil for my gun. That's what I said. Well, Betty, where is it? You'll find it in the kitchen, Father. Where, in the broom closet? No, in the sugar bin. <laughs> With the sugar? Of course not. The sugar's in the bread drawer. <laughs> oh, naturally. Uh, Jim, if it's too much trouble... No, Ed, we'll find it out here somewhere. Come on. Well, it's not here. No? Ah, here you are, Ed. Oh, swell. Thanks, Jim. Priceless, wonderful little oil can. In the vernacular of the Andersons, did you ever see anything so demure or in better taste? Such a silhouette? You sound like you've been reading Harper's Bazaar. <laughs> Ed, with this family, I don't have to read the fashion news. I just walk through the house and inhale it. You know, Jim, what you should do is go hunting with us this weekend. I thought you already had a car full from your office. Oh, I just got a call. We're going to have one extra place. Guy changed his mind? His wife changed hers. <laughs> oh. It's almost the last of the season for ducks. You better take your chance when you can. Oh, I'd sure like to. Lady and Bud are both going away tonight. I hate to leave Margaret here for a whole weekend alone. Well, won't Kathy be here? Well, alone with Kathy. <laughs> well, maybe you can get Bud or Betty to stay home. Well, that's worth a try. I'll just go out the back door. Call me if you can make it. We'll be leaving about three. Okay, Ed. Let's see now. Maybe Betty would stay home if I bought her a dress with a three-month-old handline. Oh, Betty, how would you like oh, to... No. Oh, All right, then, children. I'll just call her and tell her not to come. What's going on in here? We're going to have company. Nothing, Jim. Nothing at all. Well, I'm sure of that, but tell me anyhow. Mother's phone call was from Cedric Crane, Jr. Who's he? It's a she, Dad. You 
know her, Jim. She used to be Marcella Crane. Oh, her. She dropped the Marcella when she went to New York. I remember her when she lived in Springfield. Jim, Marcella was a very nice girl. Yes, I suppose so, if you like her type. You seem to forget that Marcella and I were once very close friends. She's just passing through town, and I'm very flattered that she wants to come out and spend the weekend with me. Margaret, she was a bird brain, and this weekend? Yes, Jim. She's on her way to the coast, and she thought it'd be fun to come out and talk over old times. Spend the whole weekend with you? Yes. We'll have a real old-fashioned gab session. Well, it sounds like a great idea. I'm sure you two girls will have a wonderful time together, alone. But, Dad, that's just the trouble. Mother says Betty and I have to stay home, too. She wants to show us off. Well, it isn't that exactly. It's just that Marcella's had a career, and I've had a family. We're both proud of our accomplishments. I'm one of them. <laughs> Some accomplishments. <laughs> I haven't seen Marcella in 20 years, and naturally I want to put my best foot forward. Oh, naturally. Go ahead, Jim. Side with the children. It's all right. I'll just call her up and tell her not to come. Oh, now, Margaret, I'm sure the children don't really mind staying home. Father, I've looked forward to this weekend for months. Ever since Sally invited me two days ago. Dad, the guys will think I stayed home on purpose. I'll be glad to stay home. Where else could you go? Now, Betty, Bud, this may be a little inconvenient, but your mother has given up many things for you, and the least you can do is give up one weekend for her. But, Dad... If she wants Marcella to meet her happy little family, then that's what you're going to be. A happy little family. But, Father, Janie Liggett's on her way over here to pick me up practically. Well, go call her up and tell her not to come practically. <laughs> Jumping creepers. When you finish telephoning, put on your blue dress, Betty. Yes, Mother. And, Bud, you go comb your hair. Yes, ma'am. Shall I put on a clean dress, Mommy? Later, dear. She won't be here for an hour, and there's no point in dirtying two dresses. All right, Mommy. And, Jim... I think you should take Marcella on a drive around the city tomorrow. Me? It's Saturday. You won't have to go to the office. But Margaret, Ed Davis has invited me to go duck hunting with him. With all the children and Marcella here, you won't need me. Jim, I want her to meet the whole family, and you're part of it. Yes, Daddy, you're the head. Margaret, you showed me off to Marcella 20 years ago, and I was in better shape then than I am now. <laughs> That's not the point, Jim. I want her to see us all together. You can go duck hunting next month. I can go to jail, too. Jim, if you don't want me to have my friends to the house... Margaret, I think it's wonderful that Marcella's going to visit you. Father, I just talked to Janie Liggett. Betty, please. What can I say to Marcella except hello? After 20 years, what could we possibly talk about? Father, that's what I wanted to tell you. I've just been talking to Janie Liggett, and she knows all about Cedric Crane, Jr. This is going to be the most scintillating weekend this family's ever had. Why? She isn't just anybody. She's a New York fashion expert. Oh, no. <laughs> A brilliant new play opens on Broadway. A new champion is crowned in Madison Square Garden. You're there. Yes, night after night, television brings you the world's finest entertainment. And you'll want to see it all on the world's finest television set. Crosley Automatic Television. But don't take my word. Look at Crosley before you buy any other set. See for yourself how Crosley sets the pace with Automatic Television. Television that's five ways automatic. One, see how Crosley Power Control automatically brings in even the most distant station with clarity and strength you never dreamed possible. Two, see how the Crosley Picture Lock automatically gives you the steadiest picture in all TV. Three, see if the Crosley Interference Control doesn't automatically give you the most disturbance-free picture you've ever watched on any set. Four, See how Crosley's special antenna selector automatically tunes to the channel you select. Five, judge for yourself if the Crosley Unituner doesn't automatically match picture and sound more perfectly 
than you'd believe possible. Yes, examine Crosley Automatic TV feature for feature before you buy any other make. We believe you'll say that Crosley is the leader, both in performance and styling. You'll agree, too, that Crosley Automatic Television sets the pace for the best values, the biggest dollar savings ever offered. See your Crosley dealer tomorrow. When the Andersons are alone, they sometimes eat supper in the kitchen. When the minister comes to call, they eat in the dining room. But when a fashion expert like Margaret's old girlfriend, Cedric Crane Jr., comes to visit, they do it upright. And even have after-dinner coffee in the living... <clears throat> uh, drawing room. Like this. Margaret, why can't I have my coffee now? We're waiting for Marcella, Jim. Waiting for Marcella. That's all I've done since she got here. First, she couldn't play ping pong until she changed into something comfortable. Then we couldn't eat until she changed into something for dinner. I'll bet you a dollar to a donut she's changing her clothes so she can drink her coffee. <laughs> Jim, she just went to get her stole. She was cold. And the dress she's wearing, I wouldn't be surprised if she got pneumonia. Jim. <laughs> Margaret, I never heard such drivel as she hands out. She says I should always wear clothes with a future. Kathy, the way you wear out clothes, they don't even have a present. <laughs> they don't? And the questions she asks. Jim, it's part of her job. She's making a coast-to-coast -coast survey. <laughs> you should have heard what Dad told her. Never mind, bud. What did you say? Margaret, it's not important. Jim? And she asked me what I thought about women's clothes. And I said I was in favor of them. Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, that's better than not being in favor. Jim. <laughs> All right. You could have been courteous. Well, how do I look? Betty, what's that stuff you've got on your eyes? Green eyelashes. Miss Crane said I could wear them. Well, your father says you can't. I think they make me look wonderful. They make you look poisonous. Go take them off. It'll only take you a minute. Yes, Mother. Margaret, when I think of three whole days wasted here with Marcella, when I could be out hunting ducks with Ed Davis... Jim, shh, here she comes. Darlings, I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting, but I looked everywhere for my red stole, and I simply couldn't find anything but my white one. And white is so drab, don't you think? So there was just nothing to do but change. I told you so, Margaret. <laughs> Here's your coffee, Marcella. Or should I call you Cedric? Darling, an old friend like you can call me anything you like. You too, Jim. Uh... Jim, here's your coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Uh, you know, darling, I've thought of the most exciting thing for us to do tomorrow. Well, I thought you might like to go for a drive and see how Springfield's changed. We could take you to the new library... The new park. And the new railroad station. Um, well, darling, of course that would be nice, but I had something else in mind. I'd just like to follow you around, Margaret, through a perfectly normal day with your family. This family doesn't have any normal days. <laughs> we just go around the clock together. Gosh, how do you do that? Skip it, lunkhead. That way, I can get a first-hand idea of what a woman in your position should wear in every situation. It would be terribly helpful for my survey, darling. Well, if you really want to... Oh, I do, darling. We'd start with breakfast. Uh, have some coffee. Uh, thanks, Jim, I have some. Oh, well. Um, now, for that, of course, you'd need a brunch coat. Um, and then you do the housework. For that, you'd need a morning dress. Uh, what do you think of the idea, darling? It's fine with me, Marcella, of course. And what do you think, Jim? Well, uh, I... Jim, will you please get some more cream? <laughs> oh, all right, Margaret. Bud, you come help me. Sure, Dad. Jim, you don't need Bud to pour one pitcher of cream. Well, he can tie my apron. <laughs> Gosh, Dad, I don't know how to tie aprons. Maybe you better call Kathy. But I don't need you for anything. I just wanted to get you out here where your mother can't hear us talk. Oh, you want to put one over on her, huh, Dad? Well, that's one way of putting it. You can count on me. Good. You know I can't go hunting tomorrow because your mother wants me to stay home with Marcella. 
Yeah, Dad, but I don't see why you're beefing. The guys on the team won't even speak to me when I don't show. Look, bud, I've helped you out a great many... Okay, ma okay, Dad. What's the dope? Now, what would your mother do if I wanted to stay home with Marcella? I don't get it. But the idea is this. I want to make her jealous. Say, that's pretty good. And you'll help me? Sure. How are you going to do it? Well, that's where you come in. You can suggest to your mother that you think Marcella might be very attractive to men. Dad, she's old enough to be my mother. Then she's the right age for your father. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I never thought of that. You kind of hint to your mother that you think I really like Marcella, but I'm just covering up. I get it. Tell your mother you think Marcella's got something. Okay. What? Well, I don't know. You make up something. Okay, Dad. I'll try. Good. Now, come on. Well, Margaret, is the coffee still warm? Where's Marcella? She's upstairs for a minute helping Betty with her eyelashes. Betty used the wrong kind of glue and they won't come off. Oh, fine. How about some more coffee, Margaret? Of course, Jim. Cream, too? You didn't bring it back. I didn't? Well, what do you know I didn't? I'll go back and get it. It won't be a minute. Uh, Bud? Oh, sure, Dad. I'll come help you. No, Bud. I, uh... You wanted to talk to your mother, remember? Oh, I get you, Dad. What was it you wanted to tell me, Bud? Mom, do you think Dad is a wolf? What? <laughs> do you think you can really trust Dad around Marcella? Oh, I think so. I don't know, Mom. Maybe he's just pretending that he doesn't like her. She's pretty sharp. Bud, that's no way to talk about Miss Crane. Oh, I know, but I promised I'd say something nice about her. Promised who? <laughs> um, uh, whom, Mom, not who. <laughs> Bud, whom did you promise? Well, Margaret, here I am with the cream, Johnny on the spot. <laughs> Jim, Bud seems to think you're smitten with Marcella. Margaret, where did he ever get an idea like that? I assume from his father. Oh. About two minutes ago in the kitchen. I tried, Dad. Jim, if you're still thinking about that hunting trip... Oh, back door, Daddy. I'll go. No, I'll go. Good night. I assume, Margaret, that you won't care if I at least look outside. Oh, hello, Ed. Hiya, Jim. I brought your oil can back. Thanks, Ed. All set to go with us? Oh, sure. I've got my gun oil and a bag packed with six pairs of pajamas, three suits, and two razors. Razors? We aren't even going to wash on this trip. Well, I'm not even going to go. Ah, uh, you couldn't get one of the kids to stay home, huh? I got all of the kids to stay home, plus an old girlfriend of Margaret's that I have to stay and entertain. That's tough. Uh, Margaret insists that I be nice to her. I had the same problem with Ethel one time, but I figured out a plan to get out of the house. What did you do? Oh, I pretended I really liked the girlfriend so Ethel would get jealous. Uh, huh. I tried that. <laughs> Didn't work, huh? Nope. Didn't work for me either. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret says everything is going to be just the way Marcella wants it the whole weekend. Hey, I got an idea. Well, I could use one. What if the girlfriend insisted on you going duck hunting? She doesn't even know I've got a gun which is just as well for her peace of mind. But if she knew you were missing a good time on her account, she'd probably be upset, wouldn't she? Say, Ed, maybe you've got something there. Well, sure. The only way Margaret could make her happy would be for you to go hunting. Well, it's worth a try. She just came downstairs. All right, you introduce me. Now, don't worry. I'll fix it up. Well, Ed, uh, thanks for coming over. Oh, sure, Jim. Oh, say, before you go, I want you to meet an old school chum of Margaret's. Come on in. Miss Crane, our neighbor, Mr. Davis. How do you do? Oh, I'm glad to know you, Miss Crane. Margaret. Hello, Ed. Look at Betty's eyelashes now, Daddy. What eyelashes? Kathy, mind your own business. Miss Crane says they'll grow out in two or three weeks. <laughs> well, I got to be running along. Glad to have met you, Miss Crane. Good night, Mr. Davis. Good night, Ed. Good night, Margaret. Sorry you, uh, you can't go tomorrow, Jim. I'll catch it another time. 
Miss Crane being here and all. I will sure miss you. Oh, Jim, I, I hope you're not staying home from something because of me. Oh, no, Marcella. Just some of the boys going hunting. And before I came, ha had you planned to go with them? Oh, we talked about it a little. Four or five hours last night. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. Day before. But, Jim, that's ridiculous. You shouldn't give up a wonderful hunting trip because of me. Marcella, I can go hunting lots of other times. Even though we do have a short season. <laughs> After all, Margaret and I haven't had a chance to visit with you in 20 years. Have we, Margaret? No, Jim. And who knows? It might be another 20 years before we'll see you again. But, Jim, that's no reason for you to stay home. Oh, I don't mind. Really? No, Jim, you're not going to miss your hunting trip. Well? We'll pack our bags and we'll all go with you. <laughs> Remember, before you buy any television set, be sure to see Crosley Automatic Television. Yes, look at Crosley, and you'll see how Crosley sets the pace with automatic television leadership. Compare any other set at any price with Crosley's five-way automatic performance. See how Crosley automatically brings you the clearest, strongest picture from even distant stations. What other set automatically gives you a picture so steady so automatically free from electrical disturbances, you never have to jump up and fiddle with the controls. See, Crosley, and we're sure you'll say no other set automatically gives you such easy tuning. See if any other set gives you Crosley's automatically matched sound and picture. And remember, only Crosley gives you all these leadership features. Yes, see Crosley automatic television at your Crosley dealer. You'll agree that here is the finest television, priced to make you doubly happy. It's Monday at the White Frame House on Maple Street. In fact, it's Monday next door at the Davises, too, where Ed calls to his neighbor, Jim Anderson, who has put his car away in the garage and is headed for his house. Like this. Hey, Jim. Oh, hello, Ed. Jim, you should see the ducks we got. Yeah? Everybody in the party took the limit. Hmm. Hey, what happened? I thought we were going to meet you and your gang up there. Well, we stayed home. How come? Marcella checked over my hunting outfit and decided we couldn't go. Why not? I didn't have a thing to wear. <laughs> Add exciting new beauty to your home and enjoy radio reception that is setting the pace for 52 with one of Crosley's glamorous new color-styled radios. The gay color of these Crosley radios adds to the charm of any room, and they're unmatched for their full, rich tone quality. Automatic volume control prevents fading and blasting. An extra-sensitive built-in antenna brings in stations near and far. For that radio you need... Get a pace-setting new Crosley color-styled radio. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargie's orchestra. In our cast were Norma Jean Nilsson as Kathy, Jean Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Sally Creighton, and Barney Phillips. So until next week at this same time, good night and good luck from the Crosley Division of the Abco Manufacturing Corporation, America's leading manufacturer of today's pace-setting refrigerators, television and radio sets, electric ranges, home freezers, and many other products for happier living. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Virginia Lindsay. <laughs> Transcribed, Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, brings you mystery tonight on NBC.